Mustangs. Welcome to your Friday edition of the Daily Update. I'm Jillian Taylor. Let's get to the news. The Supreme Court has issued different rulings for some battleground states regarding mail-in votes that are received after Election Day. That story tops today's Mustang Minute. In Wisconsin, mail-in votes must be in by Election Day, and their district court expressed disapproval of the federal court for intervening so close to the election. While in Pennsylvania, the state Supreme Court decided that ballots can arrive up to three days after Election Day. Republicans challenged this when Justice Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed, but she did not participate in the ruling stands. Justice Barrett chose not to vote on any of these cases, claiming she was not yet prepared to do so. During election years, political organizations on campus see their turnout numbers soar. This year, COVID-19 is making it harder for groups to meet in person. Now, they're making the switch to virtual. SMU-TV's Lauren Rangel has more. Ahead of the election, SMU college Republicans and Democrats are eager to get other students to back their political party. But moving meetings online is a new challenge this election season. So far, that's not stopping them from making the most of it. Thank you. One phone call at a time. Chase Nicholson tries to persuade voters to back the 2020 Republican candidates. This wasn't always the election plan for SMU college Republicans. What used to be a room full of people with the same political idea has turned into a virtual setting. Not having people in the same space is really difficult. Over Zoom, you don't have that organic, intellectual conversation as much. SMU college Democrats are facing the same thing. Shara Jayaraja is the new president for the student Democrats. She was appointed to the position just weeks before the election and is trying to get more students involved. There's definitely more that we could do to mobilize, I'm sure, but um, people are tired, <laughs> people are spent, and we never would have been the leaders on campus in the first place. She says she'll keep holding Zoom meetings even with a low turnout. I just want a space for folks to know that there's someone speaking for them in the midst of this really, really divided season. National and local campaigns are dealing with the issues too. There are just limits on what you can do in terms of meetings, right? You can't get 50 people together. Even though in-person meetings are preferred, they're becoming a thing of the past due to the pandemic. In the future, if face-to-face in-person is just not possible, it'll be more common that rather than canceling the meeting altogether, that Zoom meetings, will be familiar to everybody as a potential backup. No matter how challenging online meetings become, both groups agree that in order to get their message out, virtual is the best option. For SMU TV, I'm Lauren Rangel. The organizations add that their members are still going out on their own time to work for political campaigns. Health officials urge the public to learn from the lessons of the past as COVID-19 cases continue to rise. Thursday had the highest number of new cases in one day since the pandemic began. As of Thursday night, there are over 87,000 COVID-19 cases reported in the United States. Doctors believe the number of cases each day will continue to rise drastically. As people show up to vote in person, safety is a concern for many during the pandemic. SMU TV's Lauren Rangel explains what students need to know about COVID-19 and the polls in Coronavirus on the Hilltop. Mustangs, I'm Lauren Rangel and welcome back to Coronavirus on the Hilltops. The election is just around the corner. This year, Dallas County is crushing its early voting record. So far, over half a million people have turned up to vote. Even with crowds gathering at the polls, you can still sit, stay safe while doing your civic duty. SMU Dr. Arthi Krishnan explains how. For in-person voting, voting early, if that's an option, is one way to avoid congestion on the day of. You won't have as many people typically you can go at the time that's convenient for you at a location that's convenient for you. If you do have to wait for the day of to vote, a um, couple things you can do ahead of time. Definitely wearing a mask, knowing who you're gonna vote for so you're not lingering inside the polling station too long, having your ID out, and then of course using hand sanitizer before and after <laughs> is helpful. All polling places are gonna have safety measures in place. I didn't feel unsafe at all. Like 
people were spaced out, everyone was wearing masks, and like the desks where you present your ID, they all had the plexiglass. And, and the really cool thing is they had these disposable styluses. So I encourage everyone that is able <laughs> to vote, to vote this year. Early voting in Texas ends on October 30th and Election Day is November 3rd. Make sure you vote this year and pick up one of the cool stylus pins too. Is there a COVID-19 question you want answered? Message at Lauren underscore K underscore Rangel. See you next week for Coronavirus on the Hilltop. SMU football is looking to get a win this weekend after their homecoming loss to Cincinnati. The Mustangs will face off against the Naval Academy for the Gans Trophy. The Gans Trophy, which was created in 2009, is a traveling trophy that honors the late coach Frank Gans, a top special teams coach. Gans spent time at both SMU and Navy during his career. You can catch the Mustangs this Saturday at 6 p.m. at Ford Stadium. Time now for your weekly roundup. Erica Newberg joins us now to tell us what happened in the news this week. I'm Erica Newberg, and I'm here with your weekly roundup report. Confirmed eight days before election night. President Trump's Supreme Court pick, Amy Coney Barrett, was confirmed Monday night. Following the September 18th death of late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, President Trump fast-tracked confirmation hearings that brought Barrett to her seat on the court. The justices' opinions on abortion rights and same-sex marriage have made her popular with religious conservative voters, but have earned the disapproval of left-wing Americans. The Senate vote was 52 to 48. There are only a few days left until the 2020 presidential election. Early voting ends in Texas on Friday, October 30th. The candidates are making their last few stops before the final day of voting. Current estimates from analytical sites such as 538 say that Biden is favored to win, but many sources remind Americans that polls can never fully predict the outcome of an election in advance. At least three are dead after Hurricane Zeta makes landfall on the Gulf Coast. Over 32 million people are under tropical storm warnings. Zeta hit Louisiana as a Category 2 storm, before weakening to a tropical storm as it continued to travel northeast. As of 5 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, Zeta's center was near Alabama and Georgia state lines. The L.A. Dodgers win the World Series for the first time in 32 years. However, most headlines are focused on veteran third baseman Justin Turner, who received a positive COVID test result during the final game and was put into isolation. Following the team's victory, Turner joined the on-field celebration with a mask on but removed it for the team photo. Turner receives criticism for choosing to ignore protocol. A food writer from Georgia finds a way to continue trying new restaurants during the pandemic. Want to know how? She opened her own, and no mask is needed to enter. But that's because the clientele is one chipmunk. Angela Hansberger, food writer from Tucker, Georgia, opened one of the world's tiniest restaurants for a chipmunk named Thelonious Monk. Monk continues to dine in at Hansburger's establishment, trying some of his new favorites like barbecue and ramen. For SMU TV, I'm Erica Newberg, and that's your weekly roundup. And that's your Mustang Minute. It's really just been a place that I can call home. One, two, seven, Evo! I think it's the best sport, spirit of the game, is where there's no refs, the players call all the calls. I think this is what makes Ultimate Frisbee kind of unique. I think it's just, it's less, I mean, physical contact. It's more about skill things. For more information, go into connect.smu and contact the Ultimate Frisbee Club. Hey Mustangs, I'm Erica Newberg and I'm here with your five day spooky weather forecast. We're looking at highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s all week long. We're also going to have some sun every day. On Friday, the high is 66 and the low is 43. On Saturday, the high is 70 with some sun. You're probably gonna wanna wear a coat with your costume at night because the low is 50 degrees. On Sunday, the high is 68 with a low of 41. 
Monday and Tuesday, we have highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s. And on Wednesday, it'll get up to 71 degrees during the day, and we'll have a low of 56 at night. That's your five-day forecast. Stay safe and stay warm this Halloween weekend, Mustangs. For SMU TV, I'm Eric Newberg. On the team specifically, I love all the girls. Like we have an amazing culture, and uh, all the teammates are like my family. So getting to share the experience with them is really special. The uh, best part about being a soccer team at SMU is the people you meet. We all have like strive for academic excellence as well. So it's fun to take classes and do everything with. You. Thank you for your support, and we'd love to see you in the stands next season. <laughs> for more information, visit the women's soccer page on Facebook. Halloween decorations at this East Dallas home are causing quite a scare. Artist and homeowner Steven Novak isn't a huge fan of Halloween, but he loves gore, and this love is on full display in his front yard. The display is so realistic that the police have been called. From the road, you can see four mannequins made up to look like mangled corpses. Despite the calls to the police, the display has been a big hit with children and neighbors. Well, that's all we have for you Mustangs. Remember, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash SMU television and follow us on Twitter at SMU TV. If you have any story ideas, shoot us an email, smutv at smu.edu. Thanks for watching this Friday edition of the Daily Update. Tune in next week for more news from the Hilltop. Until then, have a great Halloween and pony up. SMU TV and the Division of Journalism want to thank our underwriters, North Park Center in Dallas, Javier's Gourmet Mexicano on Cole Avenue, and Advance ER off West Lovers Lane. We appreciate your support of student media.